Sunday. It's ground pounding, hard chopping, quarter mile mayhem in their 7,000 horsepower nitro burning suicide machine as they shake hands with the devil when they scream to the burning gates of hell. We'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Be there. You're watching Sci-Fi Sunday. What? What? And the what? Sweeps. Sci-Fi Sunday.
Uncle Andre. I'm scared of explosions. You'll get used to them, Maria. All cave explorers get used to them after a while. better become accustomed to the smoke as well. It's the most uncomfortable part of this explosion. Try to be patient with her, Stravos. She's only an amateur and a woman. Nothing there. Wait a minute. What's this, Professor Andre? Seems like a stone egg to me. Of what? No idea. I believe only the covering is petrified. Hmm. Well, perhaps my map has brought us to something, at least. Mm. I'll make a thorough examination of this when we're back at the house. I doubt that there's very much a petrified egg can tell us. Come, Uncle, let's go back to the house. It's getting late. found in the cave. Look out, it could be cursed. Do you think there could be some ancient recipe for making a stew out of this? Don't tease her, Stravos. She doesn't appreciate jokes like that. Stravos isn't joking. There could be a recipe. I'll have nothing to do with anything in that cave. As far as I'm concerned, if the devil comes out of that cave, we'll invite him to the house. But not until we've eaten. I'm dying of hunger. Don't pay any attention to them, Calliope. The only way to stop their nonsense is to put some food in front of them. Clive, we always predicts I'll meet with disaster, but I think that brings me good luck. I think she's fattening us up, so we'll be well-fed sacrifices for the spirits of the cave. Oh, with this talk, I'm glad I'm not superstitious. Out of the kitchen now. In here, you're the animal. Well, I certainly hope that you're not planning to serve us petrified egg. I know that what you're doing in the cave is none of my business, but... Stop worrying, Calliope. I'll protect you if there's any trouble. I'm glad to hear that. But I'll be in danger till I'm far away from here. Well, we're not going to leave yet. There's more to explore. Tell me, are you sure about the map? The treasure's in that cave. Somewhere. It's got to be.
buscando? mummified young girl's body that was discovered in Italy nearly 18 years ago. Homo sapien, Neanderthal. I'm sure of it. This will cause quite a stir in the world of anthropologists. Uh, when they learn about it. Clappy and the others could be right, it occurs to me. That means this mountain has been the ancient burial ground for a race of men. The Greek peasants here are much too superstitious. Oh, but an archaeologist like yourself cannot allow superstition to block the way of progress. Unearthing ancient history, I consider progress. Mm. It helps to recreate the past. Yeah. The past. The golden past of ancient Greece. But the gold I'm searching for is not in legends. The gold I want is hidden somewhere in this cave here. You mustn't be discouraged, Uncle Andre. You'll find it. I'll continue to try, Maria. I don't care how long it may take, how many excavations, I know the treasure will be mine. Even if you find nothing else. Nothing at all, Professor Andre. This mummified body is treasure enough. I'd much prefer to come upon the treasure I've sought so long. To me, that's all that matters. But maybe you can't understand that. You seem upset about the mummy, Calliope. I know it's a sign. A bad sign. I'm Greek too, Calliope. And I do believe in our ancient gods and customs of the past. To a point, that is. You can't to a point. They're real or they're not. You found that thing there. And then that. I'm sure that they're bad signs. You're too superstitious, Calliope. see you both again someday. Now it looks as if we'll be together for a while. The young lady is Sophia Minnelli. And that's Pete, our driver and guide, who found you for us. Meet my assistant Stravos, my niece Maria, and my housekeeper Calliope. <laughs> They've got the time. It's good to see young people happy like that. We were at war when we were that young. And we enjoyed that excitement. We three spent our youth dancing to bullets the way they danced to music. Torman, that's an amusing comparison. <laughs> Come on, Maria. I hear you've been practicing a Greek dance.
André. The other half of the map. How'd you manage to get it? Greco had it when I found it. He wouldn't sell it. Not for any price, but Sophia got it. She's a persuasive girl. together. And obviously you've been digging in the wrong place, Andre. So that's where it is, eh? How many men have died trying to get this map? I think Krakow is number 15. And now three of us remain. With the whole map finally between us. The treasure worth several million dollars. If the map is authentic. <laughs> it had better be real. The best years of my life are gone. Forever meant for this. And all that's left is my share. Our share, you mean? Sure. Your share, my share, and Dorman's. A third for each man, you think? Half the math is mine. And that's how much I'm going to get. I'm sorry, Andre. Remember when we started on this mad hunt? We were three-way partners. The years split us up in wild goose chases. No. One third each. Dorman and I will take care of Sophia and Pete. After all, he helped us find you. Very well. And out of my part of it, I'll take care of Maria and Stravos. Now we're equal partners again. It's fair, Andre. I trust that the treasure will be all that we've hoped. A beautiful villa, fine clothes, and limousines. Yes, riches. It'll be good. It can be, though I'll be a fatalist about it. The mummy dates back to the Siege of Troy. Very interesting. The past doesn't matter. The present would be the past. It reminds me of an old girlfriend of mine. <laughs> eh? Let's begin to dig. Yes, might as well. We're going to go in further. Ocelov and Dorman think the treasure is behind the second area. They might be right. The professor and I have searched all of the passageways. The only treasure in this whole cave is right there. I hope that you're wrong about it, Stravos. I'll see you later. I think I'll remain here, keeping an eye on that. Ooh, this place is so chilly and damp. I'm going sunbathing. Coming, Maria? Can't mean. Wait a minute. Mind if I don't go with you? No. Have a good time. Go on, Maria. away. If I'd known that, I could have saved myself a lot of wasted effort. One of the most important rules of hunting for hidden treasure. One must never proceed with only half a map. All right. Let's get on with it. Use your pick. I could use a pail of water. Why don't you both sit over there?
Here's your water. Thank you. I see you're not interested in staying with them in the cave. No, not at all. I get paid only to drive them up here and then back to Athens. This is my interest. Smart boy. Stay away from there. It's full of evil spirits. She keeps saying things like that. It frightens me. That cave there may be full of evil spirits, but I hope it's also full of gold coins. This reminds me of hunting for the Golden Fleece. <laughs> All that Asilov knew was that it was a cave within a hundred miles of Athens. No more than that. And I'm sure you know what that means, Maria, with this country so full of mountains. Well, I'm lucky. I stopped to give a cigarette to a shepherd, told that someone was up here digging. Who knows where we would have been by now. But we finally made it. As for the mummy and for the treasure, seeing is believing. You did, Pete. That's why you came with us. <laughs> Look, I rented you my car as well as my cell. As Arcelor said, it could be as many as 30 days, more or less. It could be three months. And that means, uh, that could mean a lot of money in three months. Oh, about 30,000 drachmas for the period. And that means I could buy another car. <laughs> That's what I want. Hmm. I might make even more money than that. Let me remember exactly. They said that if I found the cave that I did, and Professor Andre, there'd be a bonus. Hey, Maria? Well, you'll get the car that you want. Only if this cave is really the right one and they find the treasure. You'll find it. My uncle promised to give me a dowry someday. This cave is to be it. And so now, we'll be able to settle down for a few years. Settle in Rome. It's an exciting city. Well, Sophia, I hear it's a wonderful place to visit. It is. When I buy a home with my share, come and visit me, Maria. You too, Pete. No, Athens is good enough for my tastes. I have things to do there, business to look after, and Diana. Diana? Yes, that's right. Diana is my car. <laughs> Once upon a time, I was a hired chauffeur, and I always cursed and battered the cars I drove. But Diana here, I pamper her. She's mine. And why'd you name her Diana? Well, I always thought saving enough money for a car is like shooting at the moon. Now I have a car, and so, uh, Diane is the moon. You're a romantic piece. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Someday I'll be the owner of the largest tourist bureau in Athens, And I'll need all the best luck. We'll all be very lucky, if that map is right about the cave. Diane is counting on it. Norman, you were valuable with the gun and the war, but with the shovel, you excel yourself. <laughs> the primary requisite for a successful treasure hunter is... Is to know how to handle a shovel. <laughs> All right, that's enough, that's enough. treasure here and then kill the diggers to keep it secret. Mm. They won't be able to tell us. I'm done. Oh, Maria, is it true what Calliope said about that cave there? Pete, can you see that shepherd tending his flock? Yes. He won't come any nearer to this place because he's superstitious. All the shepherds are afraid of this area. In winter, this clearing is a natural shelter for a flock. And yet, they won't come near.
way to break through. Let's get the dynamite. Uh-huh. And some water. I'm liable to die of thirst. Any sign of the treasure? You found it? I'm not sure yet, though it looks pretty good. I'm glad to hear it. In the second chamber, after all, huh? It's below a block of cement. We're going after the dynamite. Well, I'll be glad to help when you return with it. Bravo, shall I bring you back a drink? Yes, thank you. What? Mm -hmm. It's time you thought about buying that new car. At last, Marie, at last. You'd better stay here.
Robert, what was that awful sound? I don't know it's yet. Robert, where is he? Dead. He was killed by something. Killed by something, Uncle? Something? What something? <laughs> We got frightened by Andre's order to run and bolted from something that wasn't there at all. How do you explain the sound? Nerves. Right. And Stravos? What murdered him? You don't have to ask about that. You know what's responsible. I told you already. Well, stop that nonsense, Calliope. I examined that poor man. It was absolutely white. The thing had drained his blood. The blood could have spilled into the ground. No, Sophia. There wasn't enough time for that. And just how was he killed? This something. Do you know what it was, Uncle Andre? Maybe a heart attack. Oh, and did he slash himself when he was dying? But that's impossible. Maybe some villagers spied on us, hid in the cave, and then killed him. That's it. To scare us off. I'm not a man to retreat like that. To be scared like that. Then let's go back to the cave. No. Asilo. You can't go in. I think our imaginations are jumping with fear. With the mummy, Stravo's death, and the superstitions of Goliath. You are a brave man, Mr. Asilov, but, but do not tempt fate too long. Now look here. There's a treasure worth a million dollars in that cave, and no myth is going to stop us from getting it. I've spent years trying to find this treasure, and now that we're at the end of the rainbow, nothing is going to stop us. Nothing that's human. But I'm willing to go back in there and tackle whatever it is. Do you think that the villagers haven't heard that a band of international thieves hid their, their treasure in there somewhere? Because they'd been told that the villagers would be too afraid to go inside. Maybe they didn't have a map and know where to dig. One doesn't need to have a map to figure which cave is cursed. And this cave was doubly cursed when it received a treasure dripping with the blood of many men. But how long has blood cling to a treasure? It's been years since it was first put there, and its curse started claiming lives. That was before the atom bomb, before we started to land men on the moon. That was another age. And how many ages can a curse last? Let's go back to the cave. Asilo, wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow? How do I know the villagers won't steal it tonight? Andre, what do you say? No, Uncle. Please don't go in there tonight. I don't want you to get killed in there. So please stay out. Don't worry, Maria, dear. Andre, a fortune is waiting. Don't you feel that gambling your life will be worth it? I want to wait and go back in the morning, Arsilov. And maybe then. And leave that kind of money out there all night? See? villagers doing up there. I'll tell you. They're waiting till we're asleep. You see, unfortunately, Arsilo, in my blood also there's a thirst. It's greed. Are you coming, Pete? Why not? I'm ready to try anything, I guess. For the first time, anyway. Ah, Pete. You belong with us. Fifteen years of chasing after this treasure. Now it's almost in our grasp. Andre, let's get the dynamite. to bury him. Tomorrow, Andre. Tomorrow. Here? Yes, under here. Let's get it over with as fast as possible.
Take it easy, Maria. Take it easy. Oh, I had a hard time closing the shutter. It's out there, Arcelor. Yes, but what is it? I might have seen something, but it was only a reflection. The sound came from something in there. Something? A thing that guards the treasure? I ask myself, can I believe what I'm believing? Norman! <coughs> That's what I'm thinking. There's something in that cave that's not from this earth. Now you can't blame the villagers, can you? Now aren't you convinced of their innocence? mentioned the kind of treasure you've all been hoping that was hidden in there somewhere. Now, possibly you can tell me just what it is that's brought us together. Arcelot can tell you. He has photographs of the important items. But don't ask him how I got hold of them. The treasure dates back to ancient Greece, and some items are from the Roman Empire. This was part of the treasure. A bust of Aphrodite. A bronze of Eros. Tablets that come from Corinth. Other valuable pieces of art. They were recovered early in 1900 off Tunisia when some divers found the remains of an ancient Roman cargo boat. But some of the objects disappeared before the authorities could confiscate everything. What at least of the relics is in the cave up there. This one. A small statue of Achilles holding a large shield of solid gold covered with some of the most valuable gems of ancient times. I wish we could use that shield to protect us from whatever is in that cave up there. That cargo boat which the divers found was supposed to contain the treasure taken from the sacking of Athens in 86 BC. Oh, but somehow it was brought up here. Yes, one night two of the divers brought some of the pieces. Then one diver killed the other, took one of the pieces and later sold it. To crack our contact? No, he sold the object to two smugglers who made plans to auction it to art collectors. The diver also told the smugglers the location of the rest of the treasure, but then came World War II and they decided to leave the treasure where it was. Then they drew a map, tore it in half, and made sure they were the only ones who knew where the treasure was buried. Then the diver was murdered. What brought the three of you together to look for this treasure? One of the smugglers had been killed during an air raid. He had the map on him. A French soldier found it and took the half of the map. That's when Ocelot and I ran into Andre. We were all searching for that Frenchman. But then we went about it in different ways. You see, I've had my part of the map uh, for about 10 years. I went tracing treasure rumors throughout Greece till I came to this place. Krakow found the other smuggler hiding in Italy, biding his time before returning to Greece. And to whom does this treasure go? Why, to the finders, Dorman, Andre, and myself. It's no more than we deserve. We had it rough during the war. We lost everything, but we fought. And now we've grown too soft. Me, I'm too old and slow to beat this enemy. It's not an enemy. It's more a legend that was simply passed down to us. Passed from generation after generation. But that treasure in there has been my life's work. Nothing else matters, Calliope. There is nothing else. You lived through terrible battles and came out of the war safely. And you are healthy and have many more years. Don't let the cave rob you of them. There are so many things in life more valuable. Yes, more than treasure. 
Calliope, you're a wise woman. Yes, you're right, Calliope. There is more than treasure. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to leave, Mr. Asilov. I'm sorry. The girls can come along as well as Dorman. He'll need some care. You and the professor can come with us. There's room for everybody. When we get to Athens, we can figure out a plan of action against this invisible destructive force. Yes, we must. Here we don't have any firearms. You see, Calliope. I'll be back. You'll go back to the cave. But heed what I said. There's more to life than this. of those who've been killed in the chase for the treasure. You sound like Calliope. She's a brave woman, and she makes sense to me. Calliope has her faith to overcome her fear. I have only my lust for treasure to overcome mine. The power of the unknown and the unseen. But now that we know it exists, maybe the sound of it won't frighten us as much as before. Imagine how nervous the girls are. My uncle won't allow making up. He says I'm too young to use it. Oh, putting on cream is for both young and old. Have to look good in the morning. He's also very nice. And I think he likes you. Really? Oh, yes. I'll be in the room next to the kitchen. Call me if you need anything, Mr. Doman. Thank you, Calliope. You're being very kind. soon be to a doctor. Then you'll be all right. I'm sorry we involved you in this. <laughs> no reason to be sorry. You offered me a good amount of money, and I accepted. But you didn't quite figure on all of this. What I really don't like is being locked up in here. Somebody is going to press a button. And when the lunatic does, everybody will be living in caves with death outside waiting for them. Come on. You're feeling too pessimistic, eh? Yes, I feel ashamed to be afraid like this. Mm. Fear is nothing to be ashamed of. It can be overcome. But I'm unable to fight whatever it is, and it makes me feel so helpless.
to sleep, huh? I thought I heard a strange noise. <laughs> I hope it wasn't that thing that you heard. Oh, I certainly hope I don't hear that terrible thing. Tell me, how was Mr. Dorman? He's fine, Maria. Athens seems to be so far away tonight. I'd be happy if I were just a mile from here. Or at least where people's lives are normal. Hmm. Yesterday I thought about my business, that's all. As you know, I was full of big plans to get rich. And now I'm sorry I didn't pay a lot more attention to other things. More important things like dancing, flowers, books, mm -hmm. and music. That's right, yes. I'm beginning to realize how much there can be in life if one just opens his eyes and somebody around to share it all with you. Maria, did you ever have somebody? I never remained long enough in one place to meet anyone. And I was orphaned when I was nine. Then my uncle became father and mother. Then we began chasing the treasure. I bet it was pretty rough. I've been lucky. I have my parents. My parents and two brothers. Uncle Andre has meant well, been so considerate. But I'm sure I must be a burden to him. When we get to Athens, I want you to meet my family. Then we'll go dancing, swimming in, and take a, a walk in the park. Oh, I'm sure I'm going to like that. And me? thought that egg had turned to stone. In the explosion in the cave that uncovered this egg, there must have been another like it. And the other one could have rolled into a corner and hatched immediately. So what killed Strabos and came after us might have grown from something like that? It comes from a prehistoric age. We already know that. They lay unhatched for thousands of years, maybe even millions, until the day when we or I accidentally blasted them loose. But why can't it be seen? I don't know. Maybe it absorbs the color of its background as protection and becomes invisible immediately. I'll make coffee. Thank you, Calliope. It's apparent that it really can be dangerous to dig up in these Greek mountains here. It should be prohibited by law. Archaeology is too recent a science to have many regulations. At the beginning of the century, practically all we knew of ancient peoples came from what we read in the Bible. But since 1910, we've had many discoveries and learned a lot from them. And before that, no one does? Very few. Champignon was one in 1822. He found the Rosetta Stone. 
I guess that might be considered the beginning of archaeology. Today, they dig all over, even under the sea. And are we going to be rewarded for unearthing a prehistoric monster? this and keep Calliope happy or sell it to some other ambitious fortune hunter. I'll sell my share of the map right now for a hospital bed. Calliope, hurry up with the coffee. It's coming. Just a minute. Maybe some gay music will help.
Don't cry, Maria. <laughs> there must be a way to fight. Before, I was saying it's impossible to fight back. It's like living under the threat of an atom bomb. We'll hear it drop and then... I'll take the atom bomb, Ace. Nobody's pressed the button yet. I'd like to press a button and drop one right on that cave. The sooner we leave, the better. If our invisible friend out there permits it. Andre's right. At dawn, we'll leave. Can anybody sleep? Not me. I'm sorry that you should see me like this. You should have seen me in my younger years. I'm not at all ashamed of you. You don't have to prove yourself to me. The six years you've wasted with me chasing after that treasure. Wasted? No. They've been six happy years. No matter what happens here. Sophia, we're so close to the treasure and yet so far. You're the one I feel sorry for. I'm young. There's much left for me. But for you and Andre and Dorman. Well said, Sophia. I would be glad to fight that beast with bare hands if it would guarantee the safety of you young folks. I live most of my life already. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. One thing seems certain to me. This, whatever it is, doesn't like the kitchen.
Kostilov. Dorman. The professor isn't in his room. Get Calliope.
I let Calliope on her bed. We can send someone to bury her when we reach the first village. It made a wreck of the kitchen. Paw prints on the floor. It must have two legs. We could bury Calliope now. She'd have wanted a ceremony, I think. Hurry up, girls. We're coming. Do you want me to help with Mr. Dorman? No, I'll manage. Carry the luggage. I'll go and get Diana all warmed up. She's cold. Come on, Diana, don't be temperamental. Hmm? Just give her a moment, please. You know how women are in the morning. Unpredictable. Diana, my love, don't fail me now. <laughs> she won't start. Try again, Pete. I think we'd better get back to the house. Right. Help me with Dorman. His leg is badly infected. We must get him to a doctor immediately. I know. But what do we do? How can we fight something we can't see? There must be some way to trap this thing. I'm going to get a pillow.
How did he get in? It was in our bedroom. It drew back through the shutter. I found the window open in there. Get it out. But there's no way. Maybe if you put bait outside. You're right. I'm going. No. Let me be the one to go. Uh. This doesn't mean that the bait will be killed, Dorman. The minute I hear the sound heading toward me, I'll head back for the house. I'll be at the front door. Good luck, Pete. Maria, get ready. Pete is outside. When I yell, come running to us. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm ready, Atsilov. I'll run to you. If I tremble a little. Beware the man who's never afraid. <laughs> Such bravery deserves a drink. Come on. Help yourself. Mm -hmm. by using bait again. I wouldn't let you do it. Don't worry about it. Once a hero is plenty for me. I want to talk to you alone, Asalon. Come here. Even if you get me to a hospital, I know what'll happen. They'll amputate my leg. And I know I'll be half a man like that. That's not for me. You're talking nonsense. We both knew a great president once who couldn't use both legs. And he wasn't half a man. He was a whole army. Let me go out as bait. When it comes for me, the rest of you can make an escape. And I may die the way I've spent my life, attacking the enemy. I'm sorry. You cannot turn me down. As you know, if you refuse, it'll mean your death. you say? That the thing made tracks? Yes, in the flower, in the pantry. Why? Come with me. Pete, we 
have work to do. Don't you think we'd better wait until it's dark? Your Diana out there is too susceptible to weather. I feel positive my plan will work. doesn't work against us. What do you mean? I hope it doesn't go around it. chance with this. going away. I'm going outside. I can see how badly it's wounded. Look there. It's a strange animal. No telling how fast it will heal. Let's go, Pete. Let's get Dorman. Dorman?
pay for an entire week. You don't owe me pay for anything at all. If it weren't for your aim, we'd still be trapped in that house. And I'd be dead. Someday I shall pay you back. very brave man. And he was a friend. He was the best. Was all this worth it? Dorman and Calliope and Stravos and Uncle Andre? I'd give anything to get them back again. And another map to chase after. Watching Sci Fi Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Wall. Wait, didn't you turn off the whole movie? I must have pressed the wrong button. Well, put it back on. Put the yes, movie sir. Back yes, on. sir. Yes, sir. 